Hey guys, it has been a couple of days. <laughs> it's been crazy. I don't feel good. I'm kind of feeling a little bit of a micro flare up coming on, and it's been the past couple of days I've been fighting with it, but today I'm drained and my muscles hurt, and I just feel like this. So, yeah. But Kristen got in touch with me and asked me via Facebook what I thought about her going on a cruise. And she was like, I am trying to for like to not worry about it. And my plan was to be like, whatever, I'm not going to worry about food. But do you think that that's just letting the addiction talk? And so I started, I responded to her. And actually the response that I gave her is going up on my blog tonight. Um, so you can read all this, but this is going to go a little more in depth because it started me thinking about a video and I was like, I'm going to make that video. I want to talk to you guys about, um, food and going on vacation because Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a computer issue. Alright. I've already recorded this video twice. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned about doing it again and losing it. So that's that's why you're going to see me pause a lot if my computer acts ridiculous. So, okay. Food and vacation. First of all, let's talk about why we go on vacation. We go to take a break, to rejuvenate, to refresh ourselves, to come back to life with a new zeal and a new zest and to be ready to go back to work and to feel restored. So on vacation, we need to make sure we take actions that ensure that when we come back, we're in the best mental place to live life. And for me and for many of us, Having the attitude, like, I don't care, I'm on vacation, and then having a 5 to 10 pound gain a week and a half later, it's kind of like, sure, you had a carefree week, but now you're back in real life and you're upset and resentful and angry and depressed and not wanting to do it and feeling like, what's the point? So really, it's like all the reasons you go on vacation to regenerate and to rejuvenate and to feel refreshed gets thrown at the door the minute you face the scale again. So you do one of two things. You face the scale and throw it away, or you just postpone that. And three months later, it's even worse. So with that in mind, let's talk about how we can live on vacation. And Kristen was actually talking about a cruise, which cruises are very food-centric. People go and treat them like a 24-7 eat-a-thon. But you need to be honest, and that is the biggest thing, being honest with yourself, and figure out, one, what are you okay with? Are you okay with a four-pound gain? Are you okay with a maintain? Do you want to lose? And then you need to structure your plan around that. Then people will say, this is so, so common, well, I don't want to have to count calories on vacation. I don't want to have to haul my phone around on vacation. I don't want to have to haul a tracker around. I don't want to constantly be looking at values. I don't want to worry about that. And to you, I say, there is a difference between worrying about it and planning for it. You schedule, like, you rent a car. You pre-rent your hotel room, you buy your plane tickets, you don't leave all that to the last minute, you're not like, well, I don't want to plan. No, you plan those things. So plan your food in advance, so that when you get on your trip, you don't have to worry. Give yourself very real and very precise outlines. If you want to make a rule like, every time I eat, whatever they bring to the table, I'm cutting in half and I'm only eating half. That's a good one. And then you don't have to worry about it. You order whatever you order, you cut it in half, you eat half of it, that's part of your plan. Um, you can be like, you know, I'm only going to have dessert once. 
especially in cruise ships where desserts are everywhere and ice cream bars are everywhere, you can say, I'm only going to have it once. So you don't have to worry about which one you pick. Don't worry about the calories. Don't worry about, because you're, you're going to go over calories. It's okay. You're not counting. You're not worrying. But you are planning. You have a plan. You're only going to eat dessert once. So if you hit the ice cream bar between breakfast and lunch, that's your dessert for the day. If you hold, save it for dinner, that's your dessert. You see what I'm saying? So just having a plan means I have rules I've already set up. That means you can tell your husband. Here are my rules. This is what I'm doing. Don't treat me like I'm crazy. Please respect my decisions. When I went to get married, I told my wife, if you want me to be able to enjoy my, my wedding cake and you're, you want me to be able to enjoy this trip, then I need you to understand that, one, I have to find a Weight Watchers and weigh in. Two, I have to have my food pre-planned. And three, I have to work out. And she was like, fine. If that's what you need so that we can go and have a good time, let's do it. So letting everybody know you're gonna, who you're with ahead of time helps you stay on plan. Okay. Hey, hubby, guess what? Every time I'm order, I'm throwing away half my food. Or you get it. Yay! Um, hey, hubby, guess what? I'm only eating dessert once. So even if you have ice cream 16 times, please don't tell me to have some too. I'm not. You know, those things. Um... You want to eat your meals like you are at home. Because here's the thing. It is one thing to say, I'm going to have this special meal at this expensive restaurant where I'm never going to eat again. And just go all out. But you're on this cruise for 5 to 7, 9, 14 days. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't have to eat every meal like you're going all out. You can eat breakfast like normal, even though there's a bar with everything in the world. Eat breakfast like normal. Eat a breakfast that's going to get you ready for your day, like your proteins and not all sugary and craziness, right? Make sure you plan days and activities that have you burning calories so you don't have to worry about exercise because you have your activity planned in. Eat lunch like it's just another lunch. And use dinner to experiment, to really try foods that you would not normally get. Like all those fun, like what's the gestapo? Bacho and like uh, risotto and like all those things that the top chef people make and you're like that sounds really fancy I'm never gonna make it <laughs> you know use that time to order those dishes if you're gonna have a food centric vacation instead of it being all about like the consumption have it be the experience you know now and if you have a trigger food, just because you're on vacation, it is not an excuse to have the trigger food. It's just not. Um, for instance, if I, all right, my trigger, my big sobriety trigger food is fast food hamburgers, okay? If I went to France, it's a once in a lifetime trip. I'm going to try their foods. I'm going to try the sauces that are creamy. I'm going to try the breads. I'm going to try the pastries. I'm going to try their food, and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. When is the next time I'm in France? Even if I go back, it won't be anytime soon. You know, if I get addicted to a little bistro's dish, I can't get it again and again. I'm okay. But just because I'm in France going, I'm not counting calories and I'm not worrying about food, doesn't mean I need to find a French McDonald's and eat the things that I know are trigger foods. Don't use it as an excuse to let yourself off the hook. There you go. That's how I feel about that. And here again, it is all about honestly knowing what you can and can't do and still stay on the path. And... I really, because people will be like, oh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't see, you know, like, uh, you know, planning foods, but have rules, have a plan. You're not going to hop on a plane, get off, and then figure out where you're sleeping. You have a plan, because plans help reduce stress. You know how stressed out you'd be if you were like, yeah, we're going to take a vacation. Uh, I'm not really sure on the dates, and uh, what we're going to do is just get to the airport, pay the money find a hotel once we get there. I mean, that's so stressful. So why put yourself in that situation with food, especially if food is a problem? 
Now, if you're not on a cruise or something like that where you can actually control, like you're going to rent a car and you're going to have access to wherever you want to go, here's the next thing. As soon as you know where you're going, Google, like, the fine dinings, the restaurants, the things you have to try while you're there. And then Google Subway. And then go to Google Maps and print directions from your hotel to Subway, just like you would if you were going to Orlando, but you weren't staying in Disney World, you would find out where Disney World was and print directions. If you were going, you know, to Texas to, to SeaWorld, you would do the same thing. Do the same thing with Subways, find them all over the area, and then Google them, print the directions, keep them in your purse. Not stressful. You just pull it out, let's find a Subway, a sushi restaurant, uh, all those safe places to eat. Safe. Um, and then, go online. Those restaurants, those fine dining restaurants that you have to try, you just, you're in, you know, Philadelphia, there's this diner you have to try. Then you figure out what the signature dish is, you find out the information, and you print up your order ahead of time. This is what I'm going to order. This is my plan. It's not me worrying, it's not me counting calories, it's me being smart for me and having a plan. And that's good, and it's healthy, and that's the way you need to be if you, you have to arm yourself. You don't, I mean, if you go into a situation knowing it's going to be a hard situation, knowing you probably can't handle it, and then you take away all the information and all the ability to make the right choices, so you're basically disarming yourself, you're, ba you're sacrificing yourself. You are wanting to fail because you want an excuse to give in. And it doesn't have to be that way. Now, really quick, because somebody else brought it up, and I'm not sure who right now because it's late and I'm tired. Um, somebody asked me about eating and holidays. And they were like, yeah, but what do you think about the holidays? I have said this before, and I will say it again. If you are a food addict, and even if you don't identify as a food addict, but you are working hard to lose weight, and you have a significant amount of weight to lose, and you know that your habits are hard to break once you let them go again, is Christmas really a good reason to throw away 50 pounds lost? Is, you know, if you're sober, like, I, I coming up on this Christmas, I have been sober for a year and a half. Is that really a reason to, like, go off and binge? Um, if I was an alcoholic and I came on here and was like, hey, guys, like, say this is a, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm totally an alcoholic, but it's Christmas. Don't you think I should have two or three drinks? Nobody would be like, hell yeah, have your two or three drinks. If I was a cocaine addict and I was like, oh, God, I just cannot get through New Year's without a bump or two, nobody would be like, get that bump or two. It is no different. You are shooting yourself in the foot if you do that, and you are using the holidays as an excuse. So there you go. That's how I feel about that. And I'm sorry this is not very energetic. It was the first time. It was kind of the second time. This time, I'm, it's, like, really late. I have not been feeling well. I'm tired, but I did want to get that out there. You're also going to get three days of food vlogs. Um, Thursday, Friday, and today. And I did want to say I balanced to the penny. To the penny today. I'm so excited. All right, guys. I will talk to you later, and I look forward to it. <laughs> It's a boiled breakfast and coffee. Yay. Having an afternoon snack. Well, actually, it's just, it's a noon snack. Having a noon snack. <laughs> Dinner. Dinner is two portobello mushroom caps. And they are stuffed with light alfredo, spinach, um, and topped, and a little bit of broccoli, and topped with mozzarella and then the sauce that I like to dip them in is the runoff that came off of them when I baked them. So good. A tiny piece of frozen heaven. Oh my god. Broccoli, egg whites, and a 
feta cheese. Can you see me now? Feta cheese. Omelette for breakfast. So for lunch, I am having shake and bake, like, you know, faux fried green uh, tomatoes on a bed of lettuce. How divine. Look how good that looks. So fabulous. So is the banana who is home from work early. Hello, banana. And look, she's so recovered from the cinnamon challenge. <laughs> How awful was that? She chomed the wall. <laughs> oh, I cleaned it already. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Soft mushrooms again today because they're delish. A beautiful way to start your day. Coffee with a new milk. I'll show you in a second. A new Mac. And water. What a breakfast. Check out that milk. Oh my god, it's 60 calories for a cup. It's almond milk and coconut milk blended. And I think it's it's very nutty. It's very coconutty, but it is so delicious. It's also very, very thin. Not thick at all. So I love it so much. Look, there's my asparagus. I'm cooking them today. Look. Yeah, they're sitting in water to stay crispy. And look, there was an explosion of food coloring. <laughs> it is carnival time. Yeah. King cake. Lunch is two turkey sausages, Italian style turkey sausage, wrapped in lettuce and an apple. Uh, pizza made on the Hunger Girl flat out bread. It's just like a whole bunch of leftovers and stuff. It's a little bit of Alfredo sauce, which I also have for dipping my broccoli in. Um, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of the corn salsa, a slice of tomato, a little bit of ricotta. It's just a bunch of leftovers just making a pizza. So that's dinner.